Let's look at how to allow users to toggle between light and dark mode in Next.js and why it's more challenging than it seems. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today I'll show you how I allow users to choose between light and dark mode on my Next.js blog. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Applying light and dark mode to your website with Tailwind CSS isn't too difficult. You just identify the system preference and then that is what is applied. However, if you want to allow your users to toggle between light and dark mode, it gets a little more complicated in Next.js. And that's because everything is rendered on the server first. And there's no way the server knows the individual user's preferences for light or dark mode. You have to wait until you load the site in the browser to read those from local storage. What can happen, the problem you could have, is a flash or a flicker of light because you might be loading in the light mode from the server render and yet the user's preference is dark or vice versa. So how to handle that? Well, I found a package or a dependency, if you will, that will help you. It's called Next Themes. Let me show you how I applied it to my Next.js blog. We're in VS Code and you want to add one line to your Tailwind config file. You can see that line is dark mode and then has a value of class. And that tells Tailwind we're going to manually change between light and dark modes. After making that change, let's go to the package JSON file and you can see that I have added next themes as a dependency in my blog. Now to do that in your blog, let's go ahead and open up the terminal. You can see I've typed it out already, but it's npm i next-themes to install this in your project. So go ahead and do that and press enter. Now after adding next themes, we want to go inside of our app directory where our page, our root page and root layout is. And let's go ahead and create a providers.tsx. I'm going to press Alt Z to wrap this down so we can see it all. But what I'm going to do is create a client component then I'm going to import theme provider from next themes and then I'm going to export the function providers. And this function is going to have children passed in. A children is a react.react .react node type. Then we're going to return the theme provider that is wrapped around the children. And we want to set a few attributes. So we have attribute equals class and then default theme equals system because that's what we'll load in first is the system preference. Then you want to click or not click, but you want to add enable system as well. So all three of those go with the theme provider. Now I'm going to provide all of this code in a link in the description as well. After creating the providers file, go to your layout file, your root layout file, and you want to import providers at the top. So you can see I'm importing providers right here inside of my blog. And then we need to scroll past all of the different metadata that I have. And I've got a little bit of code commented out from another tutorial that you would find on my blog about the Google Tag Manager and how to add Google Analytics. But for this, we're just looking at providers that I put right inside of the body element. And then I wrapped it around my nav bar and my main element. And then you see the children passed inside of the main element. But the key here is to wrap providers around all of this. Now there is a misunderstanding about providers and context themes essentially being used. So let's go ahead and look at the Next.js docs. Okay, I'm in the Next.js docs and we're under using context providers. What I wanna highlight here is a pattern essentially because it says context providers are typically rendered near the root of an application to share global concerns like a theme. Now that's exactly what we're doing. And it says since React context is not supported in server components, if you try to create a context at the root of your application, it causes an error. That's all true. So the misunderstanding here is that you can't use these without making your entire application a client side application. Well, you can, let's go ahead and look at the rest of this. So it says to fix, create your context and render its provider inside of a client component. That's exactly what we did. So we created a client component with our provider. And then it says your server component will now be able to directly render your provider since it's been marked as a client component. 
So now with the provider rendered at the root, all other client components throughout your app will be able to consume the context. So by putting that provider at the root, you're not making your entire application a client component. So I just wanted to clear that up as we add this to the application. Now, before we leave the layout component, there's one other thing we should look at. Let me press Alt-Z to wrap this code down. You can see I'm using the suppress hydration warning attribute. Let's look at the React docs for this. Now we're in the React docs. If you use server-side React rendering, normally there's a warning when the server and the client render different content. Well, that's what we're going to get with next themes because the server cannot know what I want for my light or dark mode preference. So next themes is going to grab that, throw that class onto the HTML element. That's going to conflict with what the server sent. They won't match. So we'll get that mismatch. Well, that's what this suppress hydration warning attribute is all about. So it says, if you set this to true, React will not warn you about mismatches in the attributes and the content of that element, but it only works one level deep. So that's good. You're not switching this for your entire application and is intended to be used as an escape hatch. And that's exactly what we need here because the server can in no way render my preference or your preference for light and dark mode. So it says don't overuse it, but this is a great use for this attribute. We're back in VS Code. Now I'm going to scroll to my components directory and inside of there, I created a component called theme switch. You can see that it's a client component. This is the component that's going to allow me to click on the sun or moon icon and switch the themes on my blog. So you can see I'm bringing in the sun and moon icons. I'm also bringing in use state and use effect, bringing in the use theme hook from next themes and bringing in the image component from Next.js. So let's look inside this component. The very first thing I need to do is check to see if the component is mounted in the client or not. So I have use state for our mounted state, mounted and set mounted. I'm only going to check that inside of use effect because use effect will only run in the client. So therefore, when use effect runs, I'll know the component is mounted. So we're going to set mounted to true inside of the use effect. So we won't have an error beforehand when it does the initial render on the server. So we also say if we're not mounted, this is where we return the image component. Now this image component has a placeholder image for me to avoid content layout shift. So when it's replaced by the sun or moon icon that I really want, you don't see that shift of the icons in my nav bar. Now the source for this is a base 64 image and I'll wrap this down. You see a very long line here. Now when you follow the link to the source code in the description, feel free to copy this placeholder image out if you want to. Again, it's a base 64 SVG image right here. Now after this, and here's all the settings for that image, then we just check the resolved theme value. That comes from the use theme hook. We're getting a set theme function and a resolved theme value. We're checking that and then we're setting the appropriate on click method and the appropriate icon, either the sun or the moon. If I'm in dark mode, I want to see the sun icon. When I click on it, I want it to set the theme to light. So again, for all these code examples, I've got a link in the description. And the end result here is a Next.js website that identifies your system preference at first before the user has as essentially selected a, their own preference. But then after that selection is set, it does set this inside of the local storage. If you want to check for light and dark mode, you'll see it there. But after it is set, it's always going to grab that value and throw that class on the HTML element. It does cause that hydration warning, the mismatch, but we're suppressing that because this is an instance where we actually want that to happen and we know what value we want on there. So you're left with a site that identifies the user preference without a flash. Now notice uh, next themes, the documentation says you may see a flash in dev mode, but in production next theme says you will not see a flash. And I have not, I've deployed this to my live blog. If you want to see an example of that as well, that's also where all the code samples for this tutorial are. And I'll link to that in the description. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.